Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Today we have some I don't work here lady stories and our first story of the day is by Anna Masai. Starbucks workers don't get paid enough to deal with you, Karen. This happened yesterday at a Starbucks somewhere in the US. Obligatory, I'm on mobile. I'm a medical professional. I've been dealing with people who think COVID is a hoax or not serious, etc. Please don't debate that here, the post is not about that. I walk into Starbucks and distance myself on the little circles they have that are six feet away from each other. There are just a few people in the store and it's pretty big so overall I felt safe. I'm minding my business, browsing Reddit, when this Karen walks in. I didn't notice her until I heard a barista say, excuse me, you need a mask to be inside the store. I turned to witness a look of horror on this woman's face, as if she didn't see the countless signs stating you need a mask, and or she didn't realize there was a pandemic. She says, all I want is a coffee. The barista says, I'll be happy to make you one when you put a mask on. Karen says, but... I say nope. The Karen says what, and I say nope again. These workers don't get paid enough to make coffee and babysit children. Excuse you, nope. The Karen tries to say I, I say out. She goes to speak again, nope, out. It felt like I was talking to a misbehaving puppy and she looked just as sad. So she turned to the only line of defense she had left. I'll get you fired. I say, I don't work here. I'll find your boss. I say, I am my boss. She short circuits, makes that weird grunting, angry sound and leaves. I can't stand when these anti-maskers involve people who aren't paid to deal with their crap. And even people who are not paid enough. Even beyond just the mask, I think personally that there's some level of common courtesy that you should have for the other people, and especially the people that work at the places you're ordering from. It really isn't a big deal to wear a mask and it makes everybody else feel more comfortable being around you. Our next story is by Disgruntled Nord. No, he can't help you. A little information about me for context. I'm a 6 foot 4, 280 pound metalhead, and if I may quote the great George Carlin, I don't have pet peeves. I have major psychotic freaking hatreds. One of those is treating workers like crap. Last Sunday, I headed to Home Depot for some replacement tools. After browsing the drills and circular saws, I've nailed down the stuff I want and politely waved down overwrought worker. He looks like a kicked puppy and has obviously had a bad day, so I shoot the crap with him for a bit before I ask him to get out the tools I want. If you've never bought power tools, they keep them locked up to prevent theft. Out of the corner of my eye, I spot it. A wild Karen. Overwrought worker passes me the saw and we head over to the drills. I've noticed she's lurking a few feet away, arms crossed, foot tapping, staring a hole in this poor guy's head. He gets out the drill set and hands it to me and his eyes meet with Karen's. Thus begins the crap show. Cue the re of, I've been waiting here for 20 minutes and you have been ignoring me. Overrod worker is shocked and I've gone from chatting about carpentry and telling wiener jokes to furious. Continue the cries of, this is unprofessional and this is what you call customer service. All the while, Overrod Worker is apologizing and desperately trying to explain that he can't leave my side until I check out. See aforementioned theft. After a minute or two, she shouts, You are done helping him! Looks me up and down with obvious disgust. So either you help me or you find another job. Overrod Worker has gone pale and she has a highly punchable crap-eating grin. My time to shine. Ma'am, why are you being such a runt? A few moments of beautiful silence. What did you call me? Going completely red. A runt. Don't like it? Stop acting like one. Runt. Said in a calm, near monotone. Karen takes a step towards me, voice shaking. How dare you? Do you n- Nope. I do know he can't help you until I check out. Still calm. Karen takes another step. Bull- Freak off! Find someone else to witch at! I yell. I can see the moment of realization. I've got almost a foot and 150 pounds of anger on her. 
So she turns on her heel and scurries away, all the while ranting to herself. I stare at her back until she turns a corner. I say, I think I have everything. The overwrought worker says thanks. I say laughing, what a runt. The overwrought worker laughs. We walk straight over to checkout. I'm still giggling like an idiot, an overwrought worker is trying slash failing to not laugh. The cashier is a tiny old Asian lady, looking at us amused. Is that everything? I say yep, still giggling. An aisle or two down, who do I see but Karen dragging an obviously confused man with her. She points at me and shrieks, that's him, that's the guy who threatened me. I say to the cashier, I would like the two year warranty on these. I say to the Karen, stating the obvious isn't a threat. Calm again. This triggers a tirade of my supposed threats and horrible insults, including sexual assault hilariously. Like I was planning to pin her down in the hardware aisle. The, I assume, manager trying to calm her down while overrod worker is still failing to hold in his laughs. Finally, she calms down enough for him to talk to me. The manager says, Sir, I'm sorry about this, but is any of this true? Karen has that freaking grin back. I calmly explain, while being interrupted by Karen every few words, how overwrought worker had been helping me shop while gesturing to the $700 pile of tools. I then start to explain how Karen had berated overwrought worker with constant shouts of no I didn't and he's lying. I say, then I asked, why was she being a runt? And, well, gestures at Karen having a freaking breakdown. Manager looks from me to Karen, then to Overrod Worker. Overrod Worker, is this true? The worker, barely holding his crap together, nods. Meanwhile, I'm paying for my stuff and thanking the cashier. The manager to Karen says, ma'am, I need you to stop abusing my customers and employ... Karen shrieking, he's lying, he threatened me, you need to call the cops. I say to the cashier, have a nice day. I walk away as the volume and pitch of the shrieks get higher, laughing my butt off. By the time I made it to the car, I was shaking with tears running down my face with the lulls. It turns out, someone took her advice and called the cops. I had the privilege of watching them escort her from the building while I lost my crap. That was a good day. So if you found yourself in this kind of a situation, do you think that you would be the kind of person to just try and defuse the situation? Or do you think you're the kind of person that wouldn't mind getting in some kind of little verbal spat with the Karen kind of like OP did? Let me know your strategy in the comments down below. This next story is by Roses and Rum. I don't work here lady, but I do get a discount. As winter was getting worse, I was finding that my old trainers were in dire need of replacing. I've had them for a few years and the soles have been worn smooth. Any trip outside was becoming alarmingly slippy. For a little bit more context, I'm transitioning. It's not really important for this story, but it might explain the mistake in identity better. On a good day, I look sort of androgynous, but I certainly still need men's size shoes. So the story. I'm down at my local shoe shop in the men's section. I've been standing there a while while being indecisive about brand and color. I'd already been asked by a few different employees if I needed any help, but I declined. I was trying to force myself to choose when an elderly lady comes up near me and starts making chat. She's very friendly and polite and I'm happy to make small talk with her too. She explains she's looking for some shoes for her grandson's Christmas, but that she doesn't really know what style he'd like. She's obviously fishing for suggestions and I'm all too happy to try and help. I spent maybe five minutes suggesting pairs to her until she decided on something she thought he would like. At that point, the issue turned to size and she asked me if we had the right number in stock. It finally dawned on me then that she's mistaken me for a store employee. Embarrassed, I apologize and explain that I don't work there. She seemed to find the mistake hilarious, but does apologize herself before moving on to find an actual employee. By this time, I've pretty much decided what I want myself and having selected the shoes I like, asked for my own size. Skipping forward a little, I ended up being behind her at the checkout. As she was being rung up by the employee, she turned to me and very sweetly offered to pay for mine. 
I refused out of politeness, but she insisted in that way only grandmas really can. I caved in to her fussing with a compromise, suggesting that I use my student discount for the both of us. She seemed pleased enough with that, and we both went our ways quite happy with the result. The top comment on this Reddit post is exactly the right way to describe these kinds of stories that pop up every so often that are so wholesome. It says in italicized text, puts pitchfork away, so wholesome. There's this predisposition that almost any time you go into these I don't work here lady stories, you're going to find somebody to just get ready for that pitchfork with. But not this story. This was a great, wholesome, happy ending story. This next story is by Zero Penguin Party. Karma will bite you, Karen. There was a point in time years ago where I worked in a supermarket on one of the most flamboyant streets in our city. I will not go into details about what it was like working for this particular supermarket, but when three separate staff members were under so much stress that, well, they thought of doing something not so nice, you can imagine just how toxic it was. The fact that I managed to last two and a half years was extraordinary. Anyway, I was pretty much the assistant store manager in everything but job title and pay rate. I had a store manager who was so lazy that I did most of his work for him. He also liked to clock out earlier than he should just so he could beat the traffic to get home. Remember this fact for later. It was my day off, but I had come in to do an emergency order. One of our freezer units had broken down and I needed to reorder all the spoiled stock. I had done the order and then decided to head up the road to a fast food establishment where the burgers are better. I was dressed in just a plain black polo shirt and black denim jeans, nothing special. The uniform for this fast food establishment was red shirt, black pants. I had placed my order and sat down at a nearby table while I waited for them to prepare it. There were about three other people waiting for orders and about three people waiting in line to order. Then in walks Karen. She sees the line and waits very impatiently. After about a minute, she spies me and comes over to me. Why are you not up there taking orders? I say, excuse me? Why are you not taking orders? You shouldn't be sitting around like this. Um, I don't work here. BS, I see you here all the time. Now get up there and take my order. But like I said, I do not work here. You are just being lazy, you just don't want to work. I don't want to work? Exactly, and with that attitude, you will never be any more than a fast food employee. Look, this is my day off, and like I said, I do not work here. At that moment, my order is ready, so I get up and grab my order. Karen follows right behind me. So now you're going to take even longer to take my order? This is ridiculous. Look, if you want to place an order, there is no line right now. I don't care if there's a line or not. I want you to do my order or I will get you fired. Look, I told you I do not work here. I told you it is my day off. I told you there is no line. Now I'm leaving with my food to enjoy it somewhere away from a rude, obnoxious person like you. How dare you call me obnoxious? Karen proceeds to grab my drink and tip it over me and the floor. The manager comes out and asks what is happening. I tell him my side of the story. Karen tells him her side of the story. The manager replaces my drink, gives me a large fries for free, and allows me to leave while he talks to Karen. I decide to go back down to work and use the staff room to eat my lunch. While there, I get a phone call from the store manager. Hey OP, are you still in the city? Yes, why? Well, I left early and I'm nearly home now. I just remembered that I had a job interview lined up for this afternoon. And? Well, you have experience with job interviews. Can you do it for me? Okay, when is the interview? She should be there in a couple of minutes. It's for a cashier role, so you know what to ask. Yeah, okay. I go to the front counter and tell the girls to send the person for the interview down to the store's manager office when she gets here. I finish up my lunch and wait. There is a knock on the door, the door opens, and it is Karen here for a job interview. The first words out of her mouth were, I'm not going to get this job, am I? And I just shook my head. 
Maybe this will have awoken something inside her to maybe verify that somebody actually works there before they go and, you know, dump a whole drink on someone's head. Probably not though, because I feel like you have to be not so bright to do that kind of stuff in the first place. And our final story of the day is by Please Don't Refer To Me. Lady, please, I'm just trying to get cake ingredients. So this just happened an hour or so ago. My grandmother and I went out shopping to get ingredients for my birthday dinner and the cake I'm going to make. My birthday is in two weeks, but the ingredients we needed are on sale and most of them are canned, so we went to get them today. My grandma decided it would be faster if I were to take a basket and grab the cake mix and pineapple and any other mixes we needed at home and she went to get the peas, orzo and bacon bits. I found the pineapple cans pretty fast, so I had plenty of time to look at all the cake and brownie mixes. I had some music playing in my headphones so I couldn't hear anything around me. While I was looking, someone tapped me on the shoulder. I assumed I was standing in their way and they needed something from the shelf I was looking at. I said, oh I'm sorry, and stepped aside. I saw the lady start talking, so I pulled out one of my earbuds. Can you help me find whatever item it was I don't remember? Me, knowing where most of the items are, oh that should be an aisle number, unless they rearrange the store. Well, aren't you going to show me where it is? Oh sorry, I'm actually looking for cake mixes, I don't work here. I should probably note that most employees at this store wear vests and I was wearing an olive green shirt I had just gotten for Christmas. Don't lie to me, you obviously work here. She gestured toward my lanyard, which I have a picture of my late husky hanging on. It also has a key to my home, which I have just in case I get locked out. Me getting really anxious because I don't like confrontation. Lady, please, this is just a picture of my old dog and a key to my home. I told you where your stuff should be, so please leave me alone, you're making me uncomfortable. Lady getting irritated. I'm not leaving you alone until you take me to where the item is. At this point, she had started raising her voice and had caught the attention of some people nearby. One guy who looked about my age walked up and asked me if she was bothering me. Before I could get a word out, the lady started going off. This young lady won't show me where the item is. Other stuff I don't remember because I was trying to hold back tears. The guy says, lady, she doesn't work here. She goes to my high school. I know her. Leave her alone. At this point, the lady spotted an actual employee and walked off to harass them. I think the guy, who for the record actually does go to my school, I just didn't recognize him, and went back to picking out mixes. OP later on had to clarify that everybody in the comments was asking OP to date the guy that stepped in for them, but OP already had a boyfriend and stuff, that's pretty awkward. But it was great to hear that there's people out there willing to step in and help somebody out when they're having to deal with a situation like this. Especially someone like OP who kind of freezes up, gets anxiety, gets uncomfortable from situations like that. It's the kind of thing that you would wish somebody would do for you. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.